quite regularly. These days, we do keep hearing from keen drivers saying that they want that analog feel that you get in older supercars, like for example, a Ferrari F40. However, due to the fact that safety is a manufacturer's biggest concern, no one wants to be responsible for making a car which becomes famous for killing the less experienced driver. These cars very rarely exist. There's only really one manufacturer in recent times that's made a supercar which can both crack speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour while offering a driving experience which is both analog and therefore dependent on the driver. The Noble M600. The M600 is far from being the most advanced supercar out there. It's got a chassis made from stainless steel and carbon fibre. The interior is rather sparse, although it's beautifully trimmed in leather and alcantara and quite a bit of bare carbon fibre too. But it's certainly sparse in the case of driver aids. Barring the traction control system, which you operate with this switch you get to launch missiles from a tornado fighter jet. I was going to say this was like a grown up Lotus with clearly a lot more power. But even in a Lotus, you get ABS. stability control well you've got your right foot for a start and then you've got a steppable powertrain in road mode you get about 450 if I turn it to track it's about 550 but if I put it in race it would normally give you 662 brake horsepower but in this it gives you 750 brake horsepower The Noble M600 weighs around 1200 kilograms, which is quite a lot lighter than anything really with that sort of power. To put that into perspective, this car now has a better power to weight ratio than an SF90. It just pulls in third, like you wouldn't believe. And I mean like you wouldn't believe because this hasn't got four wheel drive and there is no fancy diff that you get in things like a 458 that you were getting from the same era. It's just pure mechanical grit. Apparently Derek Bell drove one of these and he said back in the day if he'd have had this he could have driven to Le Mans, unpacked his luggage, stuck his helmet and race suit on, won the race, repacked it and gone home. That's how fast this car is. On a road like this you would have had to have put a Ferrari in its bumpy road mode but no adaptive damping on this, it's just, it's all fixed but it's been set up so well. But then take it on a track and it's equally as impressive. That powertrain isn't just impressive for the amount of power and torque you get from it, but also for the noise. twin turboed. Now I know there's a lot of talk of oh it's come from a Volvo but, but it's actually a Yamaha power plant that's been tuned by Judd which is a name I've only ever used in conjunction with Formula One. Now some of the ethos with this car was to make it very analogue 
and part of the brief was to make it feel like an F40, which Chris Harris, when he drove it, said it did feel very much like an F40, which I agree with that. It doesn't quite have the same go-kart-like feel, it's a lot bigger, but in terms of the feedback, it is very much that raw feel that you would expect from a modern day F40. The gearbox, it's not the best feeling, it's not bad. And the ABS, on a bumpy road it would be nice because I think there will be points where if you need to slam on, and especially in the wet, even the keenest drivers would probably wish that it had ABS. Curl it into corners, step on that throttle, and once you get past that turbo lag, it is such good fun. But then just to finish it off, it does have this little party piece now that the owner showed me how to do earlier. Leave it in a low gear, be rough with it, and well, watch this. That is definitely reminiscent of an M40. <laughs> Big flames! You literally slam the throttle, but even then it still grips. There's no traction control taking part in any of that. It's just pure mechanical grip. What a car.